Melissa Pancoast is the founder and CEO of The Beans, which uh, combines uh, advances in machine intelligence and psychology to transform how Americans relate to their finances. So it's another example of uh, an entrepreneurial startup trying to use technology to creatively address some of the impediments to American health and wealth. Um, Melissa, let's get your video on. Okay, great. Hi, everyone. Let me just turn my screen sharing on quickly. I'll be right back. Fantastic. Thanks again, David. Uh, so hi again. My name is Melissa Pankost. I'm the founder and CEO of The Beans. It's a financial care company that combines advances in machine intelligence and psychology to build really simple cash flow plans for hardworking Americans. What I'm sharing today draws on work from The Beans and work that I led at Oxford, which is now part of a global response to COVID-19 by the UN, WHO, and CDC. It's helping to reduce financial stress for more than 77 million people worldwide. My goal by the end of this brief talk is to merge health and wealth in your mind. So when you think of one, you think of the other. When you think of one problem, you think of the other problem. And when you think about solutions to one, you draw on the best of both. So I believe in showing, not telling. So I'd like to tell you or show you uh, four quick stories of our members. First meet Adrian. She's a math teacher in Fulton County. She made a visual financial plan with the beans and she just sent me an email to say that with the beans, she is out of bankruptcy two years early. She's also started a business and has made her first $100,000 in revenue. It's called Zinful Pleasures. If anyone's interested, you can go check it out and support Adrian. Meet Zia. She's a first year teacher navigating all that COVID has brought to her profession. She has no debt. She was planning to save just 5% of her income each month. Her school offers retirement matches, but she didn't understand the paperwork. After making a plan with the beans, she's saving 20% between a high yield savings account and an employer match retirement account. Meet Margot. Margot just started her PhD. When student loans were paused as part of the CARES Act, she went online and opted to continue paying. She would have bet you money that she was paying her student loans. When she made a plan with the beans, she realized her student loans were missing and she went and she turned them back on. Finally, meet David. David teaches special ed in DeKalb County. Since making a plan with the beans, he's paid off his credit card. He's going back to school for his master's degree. He told me that because of his plan, he had savings going into this year, which really helped his peace of mind when the school district started talking about budget cuts and furloughs. So what's going on here? The people I just introduced to you have college degrees. They have regular salaries. They do not fit the image that comes to mind when we think about financial stress. And yet each of them was in persistent financial stress when we met them. They were avoidant of their finances and accruing debt. They were trying to engage and they got lost navigating the system. They and more than 70% of their working American peers are financially stressed to such a degree that it interferes with their physical and mental health. When you feel stress, worry, anxiety, uncertainty, or embarrassment about money, your physiology changes to power your fight or flight response. The hormones adrenaline and cortisol spike, enabling you to make a really quick decision or a quick getaway. Whether you're conscious of it or not, the muscles in your neck and your back and your jaw or your stomach are gonna tense up. Your immune system is weakened. Your cognitive capacity is impaired as your body optimizes your amygdala over your frontal and prefrontal lobes. What's devilish about this is that most of our financial system today, including the apps designed to help, are full of triggers that cause or increase financial stress. You've all gotten an alert or an email from the bank with a message like you've overspent or you're close to your limit. For someone with persistent financial stress, that's enough to kick up their heart rate, to make their breathing shallow. Sometimes these alerts are trying to be helpful, telling you that you're not broke, for example maybe even telling you that you just got paid. But after years of financial trauma, even a good message coming from the bank can trigger a stress response. The response is designed to help you survive. It's been referred to as allostasis, which means literally maintaining stability through change. But over time, when you're triggered repeatedly, you build up something that's referred to as an allostatic load. You can think of it as a long-term cost of the superpowers that we tap into to survive and adapt to difficult circumstances. The problem is 
The allostatic load has been shown to predict cardiovascular disease, all-cause mortality, and cognitive dysfunction and disability. Of all the forms of persistent stress, work, family, caregiving, relationships, financial stress is associated with some of the largest increases in allostatic load. One study found that financial stress indicated double the all-cause mortality after adjusting for age and gender. I'll say that again, double the all-cause mortality risk from financial stress. It's easy to imagine that financial stress causes anxiety, depression, and other mental health issues, but it's harder to see the costs exacted on the physical system. Increases in heart disease, diabetes, chronic sleep problems, risks of substance abuse and addiction, increased smoking and alcohol consumption, the use of opiates are all associated with financial stress. Now that we accept that health and wealth are connected, how do we actually use that insight to help solve for each? I'll share how we use an integrated approach at The Beans. The Beans, we design with proven principles that reduce financial stress and increase savings. We focus on financial stress mitigation in two key ways, data and design. We use accurate data to help improve many areas of our health, from sleep tracking to weight loss, managing blood sugar, evaluating our heart rate. We're gonna say, you can get an EKG on your Apple Watch, but it is difficult to look at your bank account and make a good spending decision without holding multiple factors in your mind at one time or being triggered by the experience. At The Beans, we built a new data model from the ground up based on a concept in psychology called mental accounting that enables us to build automatic cash flow plans for our users and to give clear, simple information ahead of spending decisions. We use evidence-based design at The Beans and we work hard to avoid triggering our users with our UI. Did you know that the dollar sign makes a pain center in your brain light up? Or that when you think about money, you lose 15 IQ points and make worse financial decisions? So in addition to avoiding dollar signs, we avoid negative signs, scary red text and warnings, and we build in breaks to the app that promote cognitive function and stress relief. In closing, I'll share what makes the beans special. Core to our cash flow plans are our visuals. Our visuals are designed to reduce the cognitive load of finance and to promote good decision making. People process visuals 60,000 times faster than text, and they make better financial decisions when the visuals don't remind them of money. When Adrian, Zia, Margo, and David made plans. They didn't have to look at math or a spreadsheet. They got to interact with the quantities of incomes and outflows in a way that their brain has evolved to process information. This keeps from triggering financial anxiety and allowed them to see their finances without going into fight or flight mode. Not only did this lead to real outcomes for their finances, but it's promoted their long-term health as well. Thank you so much. Wow, that was really interesting. Um, thank you so much, Melissa. Um, so I'm curious whether, um, I, I assume that the insights that you were just sharing about essentially the interface design and the iconography of the, the technology process, it, those insights apply to a vastly wider range of technologies and interfaces than just financially related ones. Um, is that something that you've learned uniquely here? Or did you bring that to this from your previous work in psychology? And, and, and how would you say in general, other systems that you and we all interact with day, yeah. in, day in and day out uh, incorporate that, that knowledge? Yeah. Or don't? So this is very much drawn from my previous work. Um, so I was working in intervention design and testing at Oxford. We were um, designing interventions to reduce stress for families, and I advocated for the inclusion of components that address specifically financial health, designed those and tested them, and they've been proven to work. But when I say that we built that in, we scoured every, I mean, a very rigorous um, search of all evidence of anything that we know that helps to reduce financial stress and also anything we know that causes it, that triggers you. Um, and we built that into the intervention and then I've taken a lot of that um, and built it into the UI. And so I do think that these insights are applicable in other areas, um, but I have to say that actually financial stress um, acts just a little bit differently in some ways. Uh, generally behavior change, you can sort of 
uh, say like, all right, we know how to help people to make better decisions and you can apply those same tools um, across different behavioral challenges. Um, finance has a couple of things that are extra weird. And I think that that's just because finance is so deeply tied to survival at a core level, just like you need money to survive. Um, but there are, there are groups um, that are explicitly focused on applying these sorts of um, behavioral insights to other problems like energy consumption, for example. How do you get you know, people in a neighborhood to use less energy or to remember to turn off their lights, things like that? I'm not sure you explained it completely, but you've started with these school teachers as sort of a, almost like a beta group, uh, but your ultimate goal is to you know, have a four, fi four fee service uh, with multiple tiers, right? And, and, and uh, that's, the, that's the business model. And, and this is yeah. definitely something you think could be a profitable business, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I'm glad that you mentioned it. So yes, yeah, so what I showed you is, the, is a technology product. We have an in-person workshop um, that we share for free. I and mean, we've partnered with um, now 75 different schools and organizations to bring our visual financial planning workshop to more than 2,000 teachers um, and care workers. And we do that, we do that for free, we're happy to do it. And that's very much pulled from this intervention, which is now part of that global response to COVID-19 stress. Uh, the technology product, I, I believe, um, I believe in building a great product and, and charging for that service. And so yes, it's a, a fee for service for the advanced functions of the app, but there's a free version that's available to everyone. Well, it's yet another great example that we're, we're, we're showing in this conference of an entrepreneurial intervention that could be a real business and could really help Americans with their health and wealth and maybe, you know, even affect this issue of empathy and, and wellness that we, we are looking at also as macro issues. And I'm also very uh, glad that you're followed by Kathy Besant of Bank of America. Maybe she'll have an observation or two. Uh, and this is a, a, a yeah, cue to grew to at some point in that conversation bring this up. But thank you so much, Melissa, and uh, we'll 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 be talking further. I hope. Thank you, David. I appreciate it.